the things in, in our in our adult class that we talked about was that when Peter denied Christ three times, uh, some of the research I did into that, that Peter didn't lose his faith, but he lost his courage. And looking at that vein of a low point in, say, my life, I lost my courage, but I didn't lose my faith. And that's what brought me up from the doldrums. Brought me out of the darkness. So I think that's that's important that yeah, you can lose your courage, but don't lose your faith. Because we're all gonna be brought at to some point of our lives where our courage is gonna be tested whether it's on the battlefield or wherever it is. And yeah, you can lose it, but don't lose your faith. I don't think to that extreme, probably. But, and there's always, I mean, I either have my parents in my life or I've had my wife, Joyce, in my life. And there's always been somebody that I could go to when, if I am low. It could have been switching jobs and going to a different school district. Um, for a while I was low, but there were people in the carpool that were around me. So I can't really say I've ever, but I, I agree with you. I think the fact that prayer is one of those things that you use in that time when you're put there by yourself, when, when you don't have anybody, it's some place to go and your faith has given you that to go there. Yeah, I can remember when I was deciding to switch career paths midstream in my uh, college days and just feeling very despondent and low and thinking, oh, you know, when you're 19, you think everything is the end of the world. And I can remember calling home, and we only called home once a week, you know, at the cheapest time. And my father, every time I called, just take it to Jesus in prayer. Very simple answer. He had a very simple but very um, staunch Faith, in other words, it, it never seemed like it left him, you know, in any situation. It was always the answer, and in the end, you know, he was right. I said, okay, well, I'll go pray about it, and everything worked out. But um, he would have been an example to me of somebody with that didn't knuckle down under pressure or in a, in a bad situation. He always was confident, I guess is the word, People would look to him because he was confident. There were people in my family would come to call him and say, Gil, you know, uh, my one uncle was kind of a problem child. Can you come over? Uh, you know, I know he'll listen to you. And he would kind of calm the situation and, and uh, never kind of caved under pressure, but all, always had a peace about it. Christ did say, I have to die in order to send the Holy Spirit to live within you. And we know that now. I mean, there were people at the time that didn't understand that, but we know that now. And, uh, it almost goes back to the it's finished question. Okay. You know, it's, it's finished. I've accomplished what I came to accomplish and now it's time to move on. That's I think it takes the question it's finished to the next step where it provides hope. The darkness is where his life went away but in the resurrection the light came out again for the rest of us. The rest of us should see that light, have that hope. I think of that um, in a, a funeral service. The family, or like the disciples, they're grieving. They, they, they don't see the hope. And it's the pastor that brings the message and the people that come to support them that gives them the hope. Strange uh, 
feeling when we were started to all of you started to talk about this is like I picture myself going with Joyce to a great movie, a tremendous movie, and the curtain comes down and the darkness is there. When we talk about that movie, all the way home, we go on the internet, we check it out. We check out the stars, we check out the story if it's a biography or something. And we've been checking Christ out for 2,000 years plus. The story is there. The curtain is closed. What are you going to do now? And that's what I see the power of what, what's been given to us. Christ was crucified because somebody else wanted to get rid of him. And he was innocent of all that. And that, that thief recognized that. The other thief didn't recognize it. The thief that recognized it also recognized perhaps that his own sins or the things that he did to put him on that cross, he realized that that was why he was there. And had he changed his style or his life or whatever, he wouldn't be on that cross. So I think he, he rep represents in me what I see in people that are uh, being abused, uh, being like we'll call these prison ministry, things like that, recognizing that side of life. Because mm -hmm. I probably have been on both, in both of those people's positions at times. When I've been down, I've probably said things that I didn't, shouldn't have said that probably mock and mock uh, what Christians are all about and in other times I, I see myself as saying the right thing so I think it's the right and the wrong of, of what life's all about I think one other thing that struck me is and you brought it up in uh, last week's uh, message is, is about choices when Christ was brought in, in front of um, a, a Pilate, the crowd, just a few days earlier, welcomed them with open arms into Jerusalem, and now they turned on him. And they had a choice. They had a choice, and they elected to go a different direction. And perhaps that's what the thieves also looked at. They were a crowd, and they had choice and the, the third or the third point about the thief changing or thinking or taking Christ's side was his choice where the other one elected to keep his himself the way he always was so when we have our choices we should we should probably think a little bit of what choice we're taking what path we're following so it was a choice Well, to me, um, it's the work that God sent him to do. He's accomplished it, he's finished it, and he's now ready to move on in the kingdom, to be with God. Okay. And maybe a little more specifically, when you say he's completed the work that God has for him to do, what specifically do you think of that work being? Taking our burdens, our sins. through the Old Testament have been completed, finished. And it's not, um, it's not a cry of defeat, it's a cry of victory. Okay. He's in charge. And I think of more of, uh, whether it's right or wrong, I think of it more as his mission on this earth to show us how to live. 
can to try to teach us the best he could while he was here and to speak out against injustice, uh, that that mission was finished kind of in the sense that Matt said that his work was done and, you know, his work on this plane anyway. Yeah, that's what I see it as. I, I see it as the idea that he's come, he's given us what we need. He's completed his, his work here and he's saying to you, now take the spirit and do something with it. But I also think that Jesus' purpose was to plant the seed of love and to give us the example of, of how to live. Watch it grow. <laughs> to bring us into the to the kingdom of God, which is to serve and to love others. signifies that if you stand up for what is right and go against the grain or against the culture, against the standing powers that be, there, there are going to be consequences. We've talked about that in our Monday night study. Not that there might be, but there, there almost always will be. It's kind of inevitable. So it's inevitable that because of the way he lived and taught, that it was inevitable that he would die. I think for me it's, it's died and we bought, we we can travel through that last week as we will pretty soon but I think what it is is the, now you have the chance to participate in, in glorify his life by living your life and making uh, making choices that we talk about choices here tonight making the right choices uh, of leadership uh, of example because he was the ultimate example for I'm not sure it's all about sins. I think it's an, an atonement. I think, although probably that's what a lot of people would say, but I think it's really about the participation part of it. Now, now you're given what I what I can give you. I, it is finished. What I could do for you. Now it's yours. And I think it it, it 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 allows us to make those choices, but it also says you might make the wrong choice, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Make yeah, a choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's make it the best point. you can, but it's okay if it's wrong. That word is a, is a great word, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. 